Hey, in this video, I will introduce you to EN standards. I think that means European norm standards. And these are standards that sort of serves as the very building block of product safety and compliance for consumer products in general in the European Union. So this is a concept you absolutely have to understand if you are selling in the EU got quite a bit of ground to cover. We'll start with looking into what an EN standard is. A few examples. Explain when EN standards are mandatory and if they are mandatory. It depends, I can tell you that much. I would explain the concept of harmonized EN standards and how these are related to both CE marking and the general product safety directive. Well, let's start with the most fundamental question and that is, what are EN standards? Essentially, EN standards are technical and safety standards developed by uh, CEN, Senelec, and ETSI. These are three organizations in the European Union. In short, EN standards serve sort of blueprints. They give you a roadmap to ensure compliance, whereas a directive or a regulation can, can specify very high level, say, safety or performance requirements. Whereas the standard gives me the, let's say, examples, design drawings, um, schematics that I can implement to, to ensure that my products are safe and perform according to the regulations and directives that apply. This means is that in the EU, you have hundreds, if not thousands of different EN standards, and they are, unlike directives, highly product specific. So what we can see here is that we got EN581, general safety requirements for seating and tables for camping. That's very specific. Second, we have EN71-1, mechanical and physical properties requirements for toys. That concerns, well, one example would be sharp points, small parts, and so on, which has a direct impact on how you would design a toy product. The Toy Safety Directive wouldn't necessarily tell you, okay, this is how you configure or design the product, but EN71-1 will give you such inputs. Finally, EN5106, safety of household and similar electrical appliances. So why I picked these three, and these are just three, just to be clear, is to demonstrate that EN standards exist for essentially all sorts of products. It could be something like, it could be furniture, right? Tables for camping, it could be toys, it could be electronics. So if you're selling in the EU or you're importing and manufacturing in the EU, then you are going to, then you need to be concerned with the EN standards that apply to your product. There's just no way around this. So, Another concept to consider here is that we've got two types, essentially. And I'm not referring to product types now. I'm referring to the concept of non-harmonized standards in the EU or non-harmonized EN standards. It means that they exist. They have been developed and they are voluntary for various reasons. And then we also have on the right harmonized EN standards. These are in practice made mandatory. One can say that standards are fundamentally voluntary. However, when a regulation or directive, such as a low voltage directive or the EMC directive or the toy safety directive references the standard, it is telling you that you have to follow this standard, this pathway to compliance. That's what it means when a st an EN standard is harmonized. So if you look at say the toy safety directive, you can find a number of EN71 parts and I think uh, a couple of other standards that are harmonized. The directive then instructs you to choose one or more of these as a reference or a pathway in terms of, okay, this is how I design the product, this is how you label the product, these are the substance restrictions and so on that apply. So as said, gives you the, the blueprint uh, to achieve the requirements outlined in the Toy Safety Directive. That's one way to put it. So maybe I got a bit ahead of myself, but let's also answer the question, what is a harmonized EN standard? It means that it is referenced by a directive or a regulation such as a Toy Safety Directive. And 
regulations and directives give me broad requirements, whereas harmonized EN standards give me a product specific roadmap to achieve these requirements. And it's not just for toys. It could be, say, how do I design a, an AC adapter, right? Or a phone charge, right? Or, or you know, a lithium, a lithium battery power device in a safe way. And when, say, the engineers at Samsung or Apple, when they are looking at, when they're designing a new product, they need to look at the EN standards and make sure that the product is designed accordingly. It's not enough to just look at the, the, the broad uh, regulatory requirements. And that's why we have these standards. How is this related to CE marking? Now, CE marking is not mandatory for all products in the EU, but if your product is covered by one or more directives that have CE marking requirements, then the C marking is mandatory. This includes electronics. It includes uh, toys, as mentioned, machinery, personal protective equipment, medical devices, and so on. Now, all C marking directives and regulations, as far as I know, at least, they have a list of harmonized standards. You can go from just, I think, two in the case of the ROHS directive to a long list of maybe not a hundred, but it can be in that region. It, it can be a, a fairly extensive list of, of standards that are referenced. And then it's up to you to, to select the one or, well, it could be more than one that are relevant to your product. Lab testing is mandatory. That's point two. Lab testing is mandatory because you need to verify, you need to verify if your product is compliant. Sometimes you actually need to involve a notified body uh, to, to verify that that is the case. And finally, the EN standards must also be specified, not just in a test report, but also in the declaration of conformity. So this is, this is how EN standards are relevant when it comes to C marking. So again, we're getting back to the concept that I mentioned at the very beginning that EN standards, they are really the building blocks of, of compliance. They're really the, the practical roadmaps that, that you need to look at when designing your product, but, but also when you, when you are, um, creating compliance documentation, such as declaration of conformity, which is mandatory for all CMO product and product. And we've got another video on that if you're interested in that topic. All right, then we have the GPSD. So the, the GPSD um, as the general product safety directive, and it's sort of a catch-all directive for the EU. Then you have the national versions of these of this directive say in germany this product sg for example amazon has been on the prowl when it comes to that one but in any case the the concept of the gpsd is essentially stating that if your product is not covered by one of the one or more of the the c marking directives or other regulations then you have to you have to follow the broad provisions of the gpsd which essentially hinted by its name states that all products must be safe now, the GPSD also references um, a long list of harmonized standards for a very wide range of products. And you can find uh, EN standards for, say, furniture and children's products, but not for all products. And the GPSD states that even if, if, if there is no standard, then you still, have to, you still have to ensure compliance. You still have to do your utmost to ensure that the product is safe with or without harmonized standards. What do you do in that case? Well, you might need to look at non-harmonized EN standards. And the reason a standard can be non-harmonized is because perhaps it was published very recently by say Senelec and it simply hasn't gone through the process where the, the EU has formally published it or, or stated that this is now a harmonized standard. That's not always, um, well, it, it takes time. And um, although I haven't, can't even, I can't comment on any practical example, but there may, could be scenarios when they decide that it's not necessary. But in any case, you may have to go beyond harmonized EN standards, especially when it comes to, to the GPSD. And if you can't find anything there, then you may have to look beyond the EU. You may have to look at something from ASTM or something like that, or an ISO standard. In any case, it's the same principle. Lab testing is at least in practice, 
I'm not sure if it's actually written in the directive, but in practice, lab testing is necessary because you need to verify compliance. And as, as, as is the case uh, for C marking products, if I can use that term, more than one standard can apply to the same product. So it's not always that you're just looking for the one standard. It could be, could be two, could be three, could be any number. Well, okay, not any number, but could definitely be more than one standard that applies. All right, so that's it for this video. If you have any questions about EM standards, you can write a comment on YouTube or you can go to compliancegate.com. Thank you for watching.